Many new accounting and bookkeeping clients are going to come in your door with either a mess to clean up or a lot of catch-up work to do. And you can get paid really well for this because the other part of it is that they usually need this done really fast. The secret I've been using for getting a lot of data coded and imported into QuickBooks Online fast is a little known tool called Microsoft Excel. A lot of people in the industry will tell you that you don't need or shouldn't be using Excel. This is incredibly misguided in my experience. If you want to know the truth, I think the people who say those things are scared because they really don't know how to use Excel, not to the fullest extent of its capabilities. In this video, I'm going to show you how in a matter of hours and with a few simple Excel tips and tricks, you can get an entire year's worth of data coded, imported, and reconciled. In the last video, I showed you how you could substantially automate the bookkeeping process by going further than most do with detailed bank feed rules. Now I'm going to show you a process of getting a large volume of data coded and imported into QuickBooks Online in a fraction of the time it would take most bookkeepers to do. This has made my life a thousand times easier, and nobody teaches this because most people don't have the skills to know how to teach it. When you download a CSV file from a bank account, it's going to look a lot like this. This is an actual CSV download from a couple of years back from an actual bank account. Now I'm going to walk you through how to get this set up and coded very quickly so that you can prep it for import using the tool that I use called SASANT Excel Transactions. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to get this data looking a little prettier. And before we forget, especially since we're going to be doing a bunch of formatting, we want to save this from a CSV file to an Excel file. Sample. We'll just call it. And now we're ready to have some fun. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the whole range of data, right? If I go down to the bottom, I can see there's 1,704 transactions. That's a lot of transactions to get coded, but don't worry. We're gonna do this in bulk, and I'm not gonna show you the whole process. I'm just gonna show you a few iterations of this. You'll get the idea. You'll be able to have enough to do on your own after that, okay? So the, the point is there's a whole year's worth of transactions. You could see it's in reverse chronological. We have December 31st at the top. The beginning all the way at the bottom is January, right? And in a second, you'll see how can, we can quickly and easily sort this stuff. So the first thing, uh, Excel keyboard shortcuts, very handy to know, makes you much faster and more effective at doing this kind of stuff, right? So I'm starting here on where the date is. Let me move my mouse out of the way. Control shift right arrow will select across to the description and stop there. As soon as it sees a blank cell, it doesn't go any further. Same thing with the down arrow, control shift down arrow We'll select all the way down. Now I'll grab my mouse and use the wheel just to scroll down a few more rows just to make sure that we truly got to the bottom. Because right? if there happened to be a gap anywhere in the date column, it would have stopped me short of where the bottom is. Right? So always do that. Now while the whole range is selected, and I'm just going to quickly scroll back up to the top here. Okay, while the whole range is selected, we're going to press Control T like table and hit Enter. That's all you need to do. Then I'm going to press Control A, like Adam, to highlight the entire spreadsheet. And watch closely as I move my mouse between the letters A and B here in the column headers. I'm going to double click. And what that does is it auto sizes all the columns. Since everything's selected, what I do to one, I do to them all. And so it auto automatically resizes all the columns so I can see everything very clearly. Right? And if you don't love this color palette, you have plenty to choose from right over here. Okay? Now here's the kicker. What we need is, you know, this is the description as it comes in from the bank, but what we really need is we need to be able to code this to a payee and an account. Right? So we're going to add a column here called QuickBooks Payee and QuickBooks Account. Okay? And then we'll widen up these two columns as well. Double click. Now here's the trick. The first thing we want to do really is sort this by description. And now you'll start to see the beauty of having the table set up. First of all, notice the table, put these arrows. This allows you to filter the uh, columns for anything. And you're going to see where that's going to come in very, very handy in a few minutes. First, let's sort by description. Because in most cases, as you can see here, all the ADT security stuff comes in together. So we'll put in a QuickBooks payee called ADT. Copy and paste that down. Control C to copy. Control V as in Victor to paste. The QuickBooks account would be security services, right? Okay, and again, we can copy and paste that down. Okay, now we also have ATMs, right? These are ATM withdrawals, which of course the pay would be me, and the account would be shareholder distributions. Uh, sorry, these are deposits. Let's move that down to the withdrawals. 
And again, we'll just copy those down. So you can see already how you can very quickly get a lot of this stuff coded, right? And remember, I got a whole year's worth of transactions in one file here, okay? These would be ATM check deposits. So here you'd have to do some research to find out what they actually are, right? Or, you know, it probably came from customers. And because I know the business, I might be able to tell from the amounts because I have a lot of customers that pay me recurring amounts. But since that's not apparently the case, we can do one of two things. The easiest thing to do for now, so you can just get it into QuickBooks and research it later, is call it uncategorized income. And you can leave the payee blank. It's not a problem. Okay. Now, what do we have here? It's something called Amplifinity Inc. I honestly don't remember what that is. I have no idea. So we'd have to look that up. And of course, you can Google a lot of things you know, to find out what they actually are. But I want to show you something really cool and powerful. A lot of times things come in and like in these cases, you can see where the name of the payee is right there at the beginning of the description, or you have ATM right in the beginning, but it's not always going to work out that way. Now, a lot of us, a lot of businesses buy a lot of things on Amazon. So that's a perfect example we can use. If I go in here and I type Amazon, now what you'll see is it'll give me a list of all the stuff. And you can see there's lots of different iterations of Amazon. Plus, these all start off with purchase authorized, right? And there's different dates. So they're not necessarily going to come together. Or they'll come in mixed in with a bunch of other things that also start with purchase authorized, right? But now with the list filtered, for only the things that show Amazon in here, what I can do now is as follows. We're going to call the payee Amazon, of course. Right, and let's say that by and large, typically what I buy on Amazon is going to be office supplies, right? And with a lot of clients, this is what we do. And then we go back through them and recode things that aren't office supplies. So generally speaking, you want to kind of just pick an account wherever most of it goes. And then you can clean it up a little bit more after you get the stuff imported. This is especially when you're cleaning up, you know, a year's worth of data all at once. Now I'm going to select all the way down. But if you're following along and doing this on your own, don't do anything yet. Because what's really important to understand is that, that while this list is filtered, on the left, you'll see there's missing rows because it's only showing you the rows that have things that have Amazon in the description. If I don't do anything else and I put Am and I copy Amazon and Office Supplies all the way down, it's going to also do it to everything in between that's hidden. So what we want to do is click this button here that's called Select Visible Cells. When I choose that, you can see it was a little subtle, but you could see that there was a change here. It kind of shows you that now it's only highlighting things that are visible. Now I can paste this in without it going into the lines in between. In the course, I actually show you how to add this button into Excel. It's not going to be there by default. For today's purposes, I don't have time to go into that. Um, but rest assured, in the course, you will learn exactly how to make sure that that button is there. Now when I clear it, and if I just move my... Uh, arrow keys around. If I tap my arrow keys, it will kind of, you know, move me down to where I was. See, and this is what I was talking about. See, if I wanted to code this, um, you know, manually, so to speak, it would take a very long time. But now I got a whole year's worth of Amazon stuff coded, and then I can keep doing that. So things like Google services, right? So I can type Google in here and see Google services. Now, keep in mind, there's different things. I have G Suite, and then I have apps that I pay for. So here you can tell from the descriptions and you can pretty quickly and clearly distinguish what goes where. Now, again, I'm not going to go through the whole process because the whole process for a whole year's worth of stuff will take, as I mentioned, a few hours. But you get the idea that if you do this, you can get this coded within a few hours and get a whole year's worth of transactions imported and reconciled in a matter of hours. This would take most any other bookkeeper weeks to get done. You can get it done within a day if you learn how to, to apply these kinds of skills, especially the Excel stuff. That's where you're going to be able to cut up data and get it ready quickly, much faster than any app you can use. Amazing, right? And because you're only importing transactions that have actually cleared the bank or credit card account that you're doing this for, everything will reconcile perfectly in a click. Now, here's what I want you to do. I assume you have a bank account somewhere. Log in and download last month's bank statement in either CSV or Excel format. Every bank has this available by now. Then go back and review this video while you code your own statement. You don't need to import it anywhere, but it will give you the practice and reinforce the skills I've just taught you so that when the time comes that you have to do this for real, you'll be ready. Now, in my Bulletproof Bookkeeping course, I walk you through the above much more slowly and in much greater detail. You'll also learn many other Excel tips and tricks. Then the course goes on to show you how you can get that banking imported in 60 seconds with another tool that I use called Sassant Excel Transactions. 
And this is just the first section of the course, which by the way has almost three hours of video on just this one section on bank feeds. You are going to become a master of bank feeds because that is the foundation of the entire bookkeeping process. And then I'm going to show you how to review the banking to make sure it's bulletproof. In the next video, I'm going to zoom out and show you the big picture, the entire bulletproof bookkeeping process and what it looks like when you have bulletproof book. Don't forget to practice the above on one of your own bank statements and then watch the next video to see the big secret plan for how to get bulletproof book.